sampling error and, and your hypothesis pair. The null hypothesis is in essence asserting that there is no relationship in the population from which you've randomly selected your sample. In essence, the null is asserting that the reason that you see relationship in your study sample is simply the luck of the draw. That there's no relationship in the population, you're seeing relationship in the sample because of sampling error. The notion that characteristics of samples just by luck differ from those of the populations from which they're selected. Now, on the other hand, your alternative hypothesis is in essence asserting that the relationship in your study sample isn't due to chance alone. Though chance, or we can call it sampling error or luck, would exert uh, some influence on, on the result. The alternative is, is asserting that fundamentally the reason that you see relationship in your random sample is that there is indeed relationship in the population from which that sample has been selected. Statistical significance tests yield a probability symbolized by P. P is also called the p-value, and it conveys to you the probability of obtaining your study sample result or of, of obtaining an even more extreme result given a true null in the population from which you selected your study sample. For now, I'll simply define an even more extreme result as a result that differs by even more from the condition stated in the null than does your result. Now suppose that you conduct a statistical significance test and that it yields a p-value of 0.17. This is conveying to you that, given a true null, the probability of obtaining your particular study sample result or of obtaining an even more extreme result is 0.17. The researcher's decision regarding the hypothesis pair depends on the value of p. When p is sufficiently low, the researcher rejects the null. When it is not, she accepts the null. Further, whenever the researcher rejects the null, she accepts the alternative. And similarly, whenever the researcher ac accepts the null, she rejects the alternative. As we go forward, you'll see that a better term than accepts the null is fails to reject the null, and that another good term is retains the null. How low does P need to be in order to reject the null? Statistical significance levels provide a cutoff point for decision making. There are two key statistical significance levels. The 0.05 level is the most commonly used. At the 0.05 statistical significance level, the researcher accepts the null and rejects the alternative when p is greater than 0.05. She rejects the null and accepts the alternative when p is less than or equal to 0.05. The 0.01 statistical significance level is used less often than is the 0.05, but even so is still quite common. The researcher accepts the null and rejects the null when p is greater than 0.01, and she rejects the null and accepts the alternative when p is 
less than or equal to 0.01. I note that the, that the term statistical significance level can be shortened to significance level or simply to level. There is a, a probability connected with your selected significance level, and that probability equals alpha, alpha being a Greek letter. Now, if you have selected the 0.05 statistical significance level, then the probability connected with your level is 0.05, and thus in this situation, alpha equals 0.05. If you select the 0.01 level, then alpha equals 0.01. Let's go through some examples of decision making using different statistical significance levels and different values of p yielded by the significance test. Suppose that you choose the 0.05 level and that p equals 0.22. Using the statistical significance uh, points made in the prior slide, uh, in this situation the probability yielded by the test P 0.22 is greater than the probability connected with the significance level 0.05. Since P is greater than the, than the probability connected with the level we, we fail to reject, which is to say, we accept the null. Now, in this second example, we also use the 0.05 level. Here, the probability yielded by the test is 0.04. Since the probability yielded by the test is less than the probability connected with the significance level in this situation, we reject the null. In this third example, we have selected the 0.01 level. P equals 0.04. P is greater than the selected significance level. Hence, we fail to reject, which is to say, we accept the null. We use the 0.01 level again in our fourth example. Here, P equals 0.003 because P is less than alpha, alpha being the probability connected with the significance level. Because P is less than 0.01, we reject the null. So this final example is the same as the, the just completed example. The exception is that uh, we are saying alpha equals 0.01. So when we say alpha equals 0.01, that's the precise same thing as saying we are using the 0.01 level. So here, uh, P is less than is alpha, and thus we reject the null. Now, the decision on the alternative in a sense, isn't really a decision at all. It simply flows automatically from the decision on the null. So let me just do a, a couple of examples of, to demonstrate that. So in this first example, we failed to reject the null. Hence, we reject the alternative. Here, we reject the null, thus we accept the alternative. And I'll use different language here. Here we accept the null, thus we reject the alternative. Here we reject the null, thus we accept the alternative. Here we reject the null, thus we accept the alternative. So we're not really making a decision on the alternative. That decision flows automatically from the decision on, on the null. And it's, it's, so to speak, the opposite decision to the decision on the null. 
So if we accept the null, by definition, we reject the alternative. If we reject the null, by definition, we accept the alternative. Let's carry out an example to demonstrate hypothesis testing. Let's use a non-directional hypothesis pair in our example. Our example is going to involve coin flips. So suppose that you have a coin and that you see in it a, that it is slightly bent. You wonder, does this coin come up heads 50% of the time? You form the null hypothesis, the coin comes up heads 50% of the time. The alternative is that the coin does not come up heads 50% of the time. So note that the alternative here is negating the null. Now, your equivalent of a random sample is that you are going to flip the coin 10 times. So you flip that coin 10 times and you get 9 heads. So we need to now carry out a statistical significance test. With this result, should we accept the null or should we reject it and uh, therefore accept the alternative hypothesis? To carry out our study, we are going to make use of the binomial sampling distribution. So think of the binomial sampling distribution as statistical theory. So the binomial sampling distribution it can tell us the results that we would get if we flipped an unbiased coin an infinite number of times. So we don't need to flip it infinitely. We can use the binomial sampling distribution to find out what those results would be. And you're not going to need to develop familiarity with the binomial sampling distribution. We, we're mostly using it in, in examples to learn about statistical significance testing. You will encounter it again in chapter 19. So here is our sampling distribution, and you've seen this distribution before in chapter 12. Now, perhaps the one difference between the figure as presented here and as I presented it in chapter 12 is I am using the term proportion of samples here, whereas I used percentage of samples in chapter 12. But the term proportion matches much better with probabilities because we're going to be speaking about probability. So, given a true null, which is to say given an unbiased coin that comes up heads 50% of the time, what is the probability, say, of getting three heads? Well, we can look here to see that the proportion of times that we would get uh, three heads is 0.1172. So that's the proportion of samples that would come up with three heads in an infinite number of uh, samples. Uh, so the proportion of samples that would be uh, three heads is 0.1172. Uh, we can ask that same question in a, in a different way. What is the probability that we would obtain a sample with three heads? And that probability is 0.1172. Uh, for instance, what is the probability that we would flip a coin ten times, an unbiased coin, that is a coin that uh, demonstrates a true null. If we flip that unbiased coin ten times, how often would we get six heads? And the probability of obtaining six heads is 0 0.2051. Now, given a true null, that is, that the coin comes up heads 50% of the time, what is the probability of getting our study sample result? We obtained nine heads. The probability of obtaining our study sample result is 0 .0098. 0 .0098 is just a, a little bit less than 0.01. So
so the probability of obtaining our study sample result is just a little bit less than 0.01. But you see that the question that statistical significance tests ask is not what is the probability of obtaining your particular result, but rather it's the question of obtaining your result or an even more extreme result. The null hypothesis is 50 percent. Nine heads corresponds to 90 percent heads. So let's look out here at uh, 10 heads. Uh, 10 heads is more extreme than is 9 heads, which is to say it differs more from the condition stated in the null than does 9. So we're not per se interested in the probability of obtaining our result. Rather, we're interested in the probability of obtaining our result or an even more extreme result. The probability of obtaining 10 heads is 0 0.0010. So if I ask the question, what is the probability of obtaining our result or an even more extreme result, we need to add together the probability of obtaining our result and that of obtaining a more extreme result. So here you can see that calculation. The probability of obtaining nine or more heads, which is to say our result or an even more extreme result, is 0 0.0107. Now, when we get to the next chapter, we'll more explicitly demonstrate the differences between directional and non-directional pairs. But when a non-directional pair is specified, as is the case in our situation, the idea is that sampling error, luck, can work in both directions. So in a coin flip example, luck of the draw, I guess I should say luck of the coin flip, could lead us to get more than five heads. Or on the other hand, with a, with a true null, we could have luck lead us to obtain fewer than five heads. When you have a non-directional pair, the idea is that we need to consider the, the fact that chance can lead to uh, differences both in positive and negative directions. So when we're, look, we're looking for the probability of obtaining our result or an even more extreme result, we need to look at results that differ from the null in both directions. So observe that obtaining one head is equally extreme uh, as is obtaining nine heads. In other words, 10% uh, differs from 50% by the same amount as does 90%. So one head is equally extreme uh, to our result. And indeed, if we need to look at the probability of obtaining our result or an even more extreme result, we need to look at the results on, on both sides of the distribution that are as extreme or more extreme. So given that we have a non-directional pair, these results here uh, are also uh, as extreme as our result or even more so. So we need to take the probability of obtaining one head and that of obtaining zero, and we need to sum that probability with the, the probability that we've already calculated. Now, in this uh, situation, the distribution is symmetrical, so the probability of obtaining one or fewer heads is also going to be 0 0.0107. So, given that we have a non-directional pair and that we're considering both sides of the distribution, then now we really can go ahead and answer this question Given a true null, what is the probability of obtaining our study sample result or an even more extreme result? And so here is the, uh, the calculation there. That probability is 0 0.0215. Prior to 
heading on to the next slide, I mean, do put the big idea in, in your mind here that uh, given a true null, all results obviously are not going to be five heads, but rather why are we seeing differences from in the number of heads from one sample to the next? It's the luck of the coin flip, chance, sampling error. So the idea is even with a, a true null, uh, the luck of the coin flip, we will call it, causes sample results to differ from uh, the population condition. You know, significance tests always start with the presumption that the null is true, and then we look to see what's the probability of obtaining the study sample result, or an even more extreme one, given a true null. So, as just mentioned, we selected the 0.05 level. We calculated P. In our example, P equals 0 0.0215. 0 0.0215 is indeed less than 0.05. Therefore, our decision is to reject the null and accept the alternative. And as we uh, talked uh, some about as we looked at the last slide, with a non-directional hypothesis pair, one does indeed consider re results in both directions in calculating P. What is this result, P equals 0 0.0215, conveying to us? Well, it's conveying to us that we obtain results as extreme as our result, in other words, that differ from the null by as much as do our result, we obtain such results only about uh, twice in every 100 samples. The p-value in this situation is conveying to us that uh, given a true null, it is quite unlikely that one would obtain a result as extreme as our result, or even more extreme. In the last example, we obtained nine heads. I mean, let's do a different example. Presume that we obtain seven heads in ten flips. What is the probability of obtaining our study sample result or an even more extreme one? What's the probability of obtaining seven or more heads? Well, here, uh, 0.1172, here is the probability of obtaining seven heads. Uh, but, but we're not interested just in the probability of obtaining our result. The key concept is the probability of obtaining our result, or a, an even more extreme one. So here are the probabilities of obtaining eight, nine, and ten heads and we sum these probabilities. So the probability of obtaining seven or more heads is 0.1719. When one has a non-directional hypothesis pair, one considers the luck of the draw in both directions. So we need to look at those results that are on the negative side of the distribution that are as extreme as our study result or even more so. So the, the results of 3, 2, 1, and 0 need to be considered as well. That probability uh, is also 0.1719. So what is the probability of obtaining our result or an even more extreme one? In this example, it's the probability of obtaining 7 or more or 3 or fewer heads and that probability is 0.3438. Thus, P equals 0.3438. What decision do we want to make on the null? P, 0.3438, is greater than 0.05. It's greater than the probability connected with our significance level. Thus, we accept the null, which is to say we fail to reject the null 
and we reject the alternative. The next video presents more information about how to interpret P.